Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be editing this photograph from the Photos in Color community in Lightroom. Theme tune! Ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -boom. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to be editing a photograph from Adam Smith who sent in this photo on the Photos in Color Facebook page. So if you want me to edit one of your photographs, just hop over to Facebook and send it in over there. So again, when I do these edits, it might not be exactly how you would do it. This is just how I would do this specific edit. So today we're going to be using this photograph. Let's jump into Lightroom and have a look. And I believe this is Adam's wife and beautiful daughter. Wife is also beautiful too. And I want to edit this to show you how I would do a portrait. So what you might do if you were to do a family portrait or if you have a client that you do any kind of family portraits for. So let's jump in and have a look. First of all, what I like to do is analyze an image and really have a look at it. So we've got some backlighting here, which is really nice. Obviously the child and the mother are the focus, but there's leaves on the ground, so it's autumn. So I wanna highlight that image there. And also because it's blown out back here, we want to add a little bit of feeling to it. So let's jump in and start. So the first thing I would do here is look at the histogram at the top and it's beautiful and flat, but I'd want to add a little bit more drama to it. So for that, I would probably boost the contrast just that little tiny bit like this. For the sky up here, I'm gonna pull down the highlights. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. I'm gonna use my pen. Shadows. Okay, let's have a look at this. Now, what you have to watch with when somebody's wearing black clothes is if I pull up these shadows too much, look, her clothes aren't dusty at all, but you can see in the black, it really brings out those flecks. So we don't want to go too far with that. So around here works for me. And then the white, I'm gonna lift the whites up just a hair, and that now looks great. So already, let's have a quick look at the before and the after. See, we've seen a little, we've pulled up back a little bit up here. Now, let's jump straight in at this point, okay, and I want to start being a little bit more creative. So I'm gonna take the radial filter, and I want to give the feeling of sunshine which is coming in. So let's zoom in here, and we can see that she is looking, I'm guessing through the, we're looking at the highlights in her eyes, and I would say that we're looking down a pathway and there's a big tree or a monument maybe at the end and the sky around it but I would say that it's backlit, so the sun is back here somewhere, because she's got this beautiful soft lighting. So let's just add a little bit of a sun flare to this. So for this, I'm gonna have a nice large filter like so, and we've already got a little bit of a setup here, so I'm gonna add some, a little bit of yellow to this to warm it up, an orange. And I'm definitely gonna boost it up here, okay, which is my, the temperature, so the white balance essentially, and I'm gonna lift the exposure up too. Now you might be thinking, ooh, You've ruined her face, that's true. So we're gonna actually, I'm gonna bring back the highlights a little bit, like so, but I'm gonna boost the saturation. But then I'm gonna take the brush tool up here and I'm gonna hit erase, okay, and with a nice soft brush, all I'm going to do is erase it like so from her face. Oh, I added it on there, sorry, erase is what I wanna do. And we're just gonna pull that back out. So that now, and if I hit zero, oh sorry, I can see exactly where my mask is. So I don't mind it on the hat, just don't really want it on her face. Okay, that's starting to look really good. I'm gonna make it even warmer. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back out of, uh, in, back into edit away from the brush. And I'm actually gonna make this a lot larger. I'm gonna really get this sun flare. Oh, that looks great. But again, if you go back into the brush, I'm gonna hit erase, okay? And I'm gonna make sure it's not on the baby's face and not on her dress because I feel like it's kind of, so what I'm doing here is I'm just boosting the flow. So it's gonna get rid of it 100%. There we go. That looks great. So let's look at the before and let's look at the after. Here we go, before and after. And already it started to warm things up, which I really like. So the next thing we're going to do I've got quite a lot of things we're gonna do with this image, but I'm gonna come down here, because it's autumn, I want to talk about these leaves and the autumnal feel, okay? Now, obviously, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is boost the saturation of the reds, but if you look at her lips, 
Okay, it's actually doing the skin tones more than the leaves. So let's reset this. So it's more in the oranges. But again, I can boost the oranges, but now I've ruined her skin tone on her face. So this probably isn't going to work. So instead, we're gonna to come to the brush tool, okay? And I'm gonna double click effect to reset. I'm gonna boost the saturation up here, okay? And I'm gonna boost the contrast a little, and I'm actually gonna add a little orange to this, like so. And literally, I'm not gonna be delicate about this, and I'm not gonna try and be accurate. I'm gonna whip around this here, and I'm just gonna paint in over the top. So let's have a look at see where I've painted by hitting O. Okay, so it's only, there we go. We can actually see what we're doing now. Now again, you see, I'm not being particularly accurate. It doesn't really matter for what effect we're gonna do. So let's come out of this. Oh, and you can see now, if I was to go to the before and after, you can see we've really added that autumnal feel. But again, we've done all the background, but now she hasn't been affected, and now she looks really weird. So now we need to help out with that. So this is where we're gonna use the tone curve, and this is where it affects the entire image. So we're gonna come in here, and I'm gonna take the reds, and what I want to do is I want to boost the reds, so I'm gonna drop this here, and I want the reds to be, I'm gonna add a little contrast like so to the image by pulling this down, which is adding a general contrast. Same with the, the blue, okay, I'm gonna do exactly the same, which i not too far though. And then the greens, what I'm gonna do with the greens, I'm just gonna lift it up, so I drop it down in the highlights, but only in the highlights. So I'm gonna add a few of the points here. Now I think I've gone too far on all of those, so let me just come back through. Now remember, the tone curve is very delicate, so often you have to go in and out of them a number of times. Now that's starting to look great, but what I also want to do is on the overall, is I do want to add a little bit of a filmic feel, and to do that, I just wanna bring up this corner here, just a hair like so. So this now, what it does, it brings all of the image together, it kind of ties it in, a little contrast to it though, like so. I'm gonna go too far on that. Okay, so now let's, let's just turn the tone curve on and off, and you can see how she's been put back in this image, and it starts to look fantastic. Another way we can do that, and I'm going to use, is the split toning. Because so, we've added the sun, what I wanna do is add some reds into the shadows. Okay, so let's overdo it like so, so we can see what we're doing, and then some yellows into the highlights. Okay, so we've ruined the image again, but that's not a problem, because we can always pull back the saturation, but what I want to be doing here is moving the balance, okay? I want the balance to be weighted towards the highlights, okay? So only the very darks get affected by the reds. So let's leave it like that, then let's pull these two all the way back, and then let's just turn on the split toning, on and then off. So again, it just brings her into that image, which I like. I'm actually gonna boost the contrast a hair up here. So this is starting to look really fantastic now. The next thing I want to do is scroll down here and the sharpening already has some, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add on a little bit of film grain to this image here. So what I've done is watch my video on film grain and what this means, but it's gonna give a little bit of a feeling to the image. And I want to boost the size of this a hair, okay? So let's, let's really make this very obvious, okay? That's way too much. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit. And now we've got the size fairly high, okay, like around here, and the roughness, I'm gonna keep it fairly high too. So let's pull out of this. Let's look at the beginning, before, and the after. Looking really good. Now I think I've gone a little over the top with those reds on this image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna warm up the entire image like so which I like, then I'm gonna come back into this brush and remember this one down here. Actually, it's orange, that's why. I'm actually gonna push it into the reds a little bit more. So now it's really, I've really warmed up this image and I feel like I may have affected the skin tones a hair too much. So I'm gonna pull back the saturation of the skin tones and the luminance of the skin tones are gonna to go up here. So it's gonna make it seem a lot lighter and again, her face now is looking wonderful. 
Now the final thing I want to do is add a vignette. Now what I'm not going to do is use the vignette down in this section like so because I don't like the way that it works, okay? Always. So for this one, oh, I'm going to put my grain back. Uh, I'm going to reset my vignette by double clicking and I'm going to add a radial filter. And for this, I'm going to make it really nice and big like so. Okay, I'm going to double click effect to reset everything and I'm going to bring my exposure down and invert the mask. So now what we've actually done is I'm going to pull the shadows down and don't do the exposure too much. So this is now put a nice vignette in but now I have some extra power because I can go to brush, erase and I can get rid of it where I don't want it. So let's press O again so we can see I don't, do not want it to be on her. Okay, I want her to stay really popping out of this image. So let's just paint that back in by erasing. So again, with Lightroom, we're starting to use layers a little bit. Bring my flow back so that I can just nudge it off the arm, but I don't mind it there a little bit. And then let's have a look. Let's come out and look at the before and the after. Again, maybe a little bit too far, so I'm gonna pull the vibrance back like so. But this has a wonderful autumnal feeling. Now what I'm going to do, the final thing is I want to bring some energy back into her eyes because I feel like I lost it a little bit. So for this, I'm going to reset all of this. I'm going to use the brush tool, okay? And I'm going to make sure there is no color that I'm adding to that. I'm going to boost the saturation and the clarity and then the exposure just a little bit like so. And now if we watch when we paint on the eyes, like so, let's use O so we can see what we're painting on. Yep, and I'm actually, I'm gonna boost this exposure a little bit more. There we go. I don't wanna go too far with the eyes, but what it is going to do, is just gonna bring it out that little bit before and after, looking really great. I'm actually gonna reduce this filmic look like so. And that for me, I'm really happy with that image. So let's look at the before and the after. Great. Now, if you like this image, please give me a thumbs up. Maybe you didn't. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you thought. And if you would like me to edit one of your photographs, just head over to the Facebook page for Photos in Color and send me one of your images and I'll get right to it and, and edit one of your images. My name's Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Boom. Done.